What's up everybody, I'm Olien and I'm back for another sound design tutorial and in this one I'm going to share some tips and tricks and ideas that you can use to create a whole range of different chord steps, ranging from some classic piano steps to some more advanced stuff. And yeah, after knowing this technique you should be able to create a whole range of different stuff and create your own sounds to make your music stand out. Let's jump in! Okay, so as usual, we're going to start with something kind of simple and then move our way up to something more complex. Let's have a quick listen to the first simple example. Already sounds like a pretty cool old school piano step and the trick here is to pick the right piano. Uh, sounds a bit obvious, but it's really the case that depending on what type of piano you pick, it gives a different character to the step that you're creating. So if you're picking like a clean grand piano sound that's well sampled, you're probably not gonna get an old school type of piano step, even though you might get something nice that sounds different. But yeah, since if you're looking for something old school, you have to pick a kind of old sounding sampled piano, which you, well, I actually picked this one, which is called the Mr. M piano, which is for free in the Ableton library. But you can also find some in the M1 uh, plugin version and a bunch of other old sample CDs and this kind of stuff. So this specific piano sounds like this. And just by just like that, it already sounds like a pretty cool step, right? So picking the right piano really matters. And what I was playing here is just a C, a C, another C, and just playing like this uh, C minor chord, C minor triad. And then what I did to create the sound is basically I recorded this uh, this chord. There we go. Obviously now my playing is not very tight, so I'm gonna quantize it because one of the tricks to get this tight kind of piano step sound is that they are unnaturally tight. So just having every note start exactly at the same time. So this is the chord we have now. You can see here you're playing the two C's an octave apart and then the C minor triad on top. And now we can just record this into a new channel. So how I do that in Ableton is I create an empty audio track and I pick resampling, press this record thing down here. We have the solo on the piano sound and let's record that. All right, we don't need the second part. Um, let's actually crop that out real quick crop sample and now we're going into the tile sampler you can use any sampler you like you can use simpler in ableton i just happen to like this one so that's why i use it let's drag it into layer a so now i can actually play it back and i already did a little bit of stuff before so here i basically just uh, added a filter to layer a which you have over here and then with a filter envelope so if you now filter it and now add the filter envelope, you will get this step sound, right? So let me actually delete this, tuck, tuck, tuck. And now let's play it back with a beat. There we go. So just like that, it's cool that you have these uh, modulation options because using just a, a fixed or done uh, step sample will not give you as much flexibility uh, to do just that, right? And what I played here was just like some simple notes. I don't, I don't even have to explain this, right? So, yeah, something like that. All right, but we don't want to get stuck with these basic uh, chord steps. And one technique that is actually pretty cool is to combine a bunch of different sounds. And in Ableton, there are some ways that you can do that. For example, we can just group this piano sound, create some separate chains, and then just throw a bunch of different instruments in here, right? So let's just do one quick example, which will probably just result in some minor changes to our step. I'm just going to throw analog in here and keep it the way it is. So if I turn this off, now we have a, the, a, a saw wave playing. Now let's add the piano. Let me turn down the saw wave a bit. 
Now let's throw something else in there. Maybe some strings or something, or an organ, right? So we can now pick a sampler, uh, piano keys. Maybe not this one. Let's get this weird one. Turn it down a little bit. And maybe in the end also some strings. So now we're going to getting some strings in here. Some strings, there it is. Okay, so now when I'm playing a chord, I'm triggering all these four instruments at the same time. Let's listen to that. You can hear how the piano sound is still dominant, but you have all this other stuff in there, and that's going to add some character to our chord step. So let's do the same trick and record the MIDI real quick. Maybe turn off the drums for a second. One, two. Nice. Let's actually quantize this one again. I'm going to keep the MIDI for the next time, so I don't have to do this every single time. Uh, let's record uh, some audio. Nice, and now we can actually use this as a basis for our chord step. I'm going to open Tal Sampler again, getting rid of the old one. There it is. And now let's listen to this one in action. Whoop, turn up the drums again. Oh, I actually need the MIDI. I have to play it again. Something like that. Also sounds like a piano step, but it's going to have a little different character. So knowing or having this as a basis, uh, we can combine a bunch of different instruments uh, together and kind of change the level uh, to co create a different uh, step. And the next step would be, instead of just having all these elements being thrown in there, you can actually process them a little bit and kind of prioritize them. So let's grab an EQ, for example, and we're going to get EQ8 and throw, you can throw this on every single one, but for example, let's say we want to have some good high end for the strings and they're not going to have much low end anyway, but let's remove all of that. I'm going to copy this to our organ, for example. And here I'm not going to do this and I'm rather going to boost like the mid range with a bell that has a bigger Q. Let me turn off this. And here we go, number three, some Q. Here we go. So this area is going to be for our organ. Then our analog will be a little bit lower and a, more of a dip. And then we have our piano, which is also going to add some oomph on the bottom. This is just going to be a minor difference, but this is one step towards designing your chord sounds. And then you can just cr uh, record this into a different slot. Okay, I'm not going to throw this in the sampler because it's just going to be a minor difference. But obviously at this point we're kind of stuck with playing the same chord for all these instruments. Um, well, just playing the same chord for all these instruments. And one way uh, you can actually make even more complex sounds is by instead of using like a group instruments and playing them all back at the same time, you can make a separate channel for all the instruments that you're picking and then play different chords for them and also play them in different octaves and this kind of stuff. So let's say we actually just want our piano down, down here, but I'm gonna create some more MIDI tracks where I can throw some instruments in and say, okay, we had our um, organ. Let's grab another one once, or let's start with these strings that we had here. But instead of playing exactly the same chord, the strings, for example, don't play this lower octave and they play this G one lower, right? And what we can also do is give this a little bit of attack. So this will have the effect that the, your piano is doing the stab and then uh, your strings are coming in later, which will give a ni some nice movement in your stab. Okay, let's keep the strings like that. We have another thing going on over here. Let's add an organ. Here we go. There it is. And let's copy this over here also, but 
This one is going to go high. All right. This is it. Okay. Move this down. Then this up. Okay. All righty. Cool. So one more instrument. Let's do the same thing as before and grab analog, which of course is going to sound similar in a way now, but you will have all the time in your life to create some great steps and change up these instruments, use some different chords, also do some uh, minor chords, minor seventh chords and this kind of stuff. Um, all right, so in this one, let's actually move this one to the bottom. It's just gonna play these two. Okay, these three. And then even one lower for the bass. There we go. That sounds pretty wild. Okay, let's record it. Here we go, nice. Okay, let's go back to our sampler. And if you have a sampler like this, you can actually also combine some different layers and do everything in here. But yeah, whatever you feel like. Let's actually exchange these, okay. And let's listen to the raw sound. Cool. Can you hear how there's this little extra sound in there now, so it makes it sound a little bit different. Obviously, the bass sound is still a piano, but I hope you get the idea how you can use this uh, to create some different steps. And yeah, I think I'm going to play around and record a couple more steps like this and, and going to save the samples and throw them in my Google Drive. And the way you can access them to download them for free is head over to my Instagram channel and check my bio. There is a link that opens up a link tree where you can click on free downloads and then it's going to give you, bring you to my Google Drive. Uh, There's some stuff in there that you can grab and... Yeah, and if you feel like it, leave a like and follow. I'm trying to do like a little quick tip channel over there because I think that's kind of fun. And you have a once in a lifetime chance to be one of the first 200 followers over there. So don't miss out on that. I guess this is it from my side so far. Ah, actually, yes, I have one more thing to add. What can be very nice on Stabs is this free plugin, which is also by the company Tal, which is the basically an emulation of the chorus of the Juno synthesizer. Oh, that was the wrong move. Here we go. And it's this chorus. And if you use this chorus one and don't do too much dry wetness, this is nice. 